Justin Miller, Oxford College Physics. Here we go. We're going to look at a little problem involving some current carrying wires and the magnetic fields that they generate. So here's the problem. We've got two current carrying wires. One has a current 5 amps to the right, one has a current of 3 amps to the left. We're going to consider these long straight current carrying wires so we can utilize the infinite approximation. And we are asked explicitly, what is the magnetic field as a magnitude and direction directly between these two wires? So we can go ahead and say, well, somewhere right along here, we want to know what is the magnetic field in terms of its direction and its magnitude. So we're going to have some distances. We've got some distance, which we can call an R1 or an A1. I'm just going to use R. And we've got some distance R2 from I2. We have that R1, in this case, is equal to R2, is equal to half of this distance, since we're directly in between them, 0 0.140 meters. That's good. And Again, we want to know what is the magnetic field there. So let's take a look at a couple things to begin with. Let's first look at the magnetic field that I1 generates at this location. So the first thing that we can do is look at the direction of the magnetic field that it generates. If we put our fingers in the direction of the current, orient our palm facing the vicinity of space where we're trying to determine the magnetic field, which is downward, our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field, which is then inward. So the magnetic field that I1 generates anywhere below it in the plane of the board is into the board. So we can say that we've got this magnetic field B hat 1 due to I1 into the board there. And we can go ahead and get its magnitude really easy because, let's just do this with green. That the magnitude of B hat 1 is going to be equal to mu 0 I1 over 2 pi times R1. We know what I is, we know what R is, we can go ahead and compute that out and get ourselves. Let's see here, we've got 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 times 5 divided by quantity of 2 pi times 0 0.140. We get ourselves 7.143, we'll say. 7.143 times 10 to the negative 6. 7.143 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. There we go. We know its magnitude and we know its direction. Anyway, we'll do the same thing for current carrying wire number two. Well, current carrying wire number two has a current going to the left. We are looking at a position above it, so it too produces a magnetic field that is directed into the board, anywhere above it. So, along this line, got ourselves B hat two. Great, and we can go ahead and calculate what the magnitude of V hat 2 is. That's mean mu 0 I2 over 2 pi R2. And, well, we've got all the same quantities except for I is different. So let's just make a little switch there. Entry, we'll change that to 3. And we've got ourselves 4.286 times 10 to the negative 6. 4.286 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. So there's the two individual magnetic fields that current carrying wire number 1 and current carrying wire number 2 produce equidistant in between the two wires. The question really is, what is the net field at that location? So, I want the net field. That is going to be equal to B hat 1 plus B hat 2. In these particular cases, it's easiest to just one-dimensionalize things. The field's pointing in the same direction. So let's just say put in be the plus direction. And 
thus we can write the magnitude, excuse me, not the magnitude, but the net magnetic field is equal to B1, we'll call that plus because it's in, and B2, we'll call that plus because it's in. We just add up those two values there, and we've got ourselves the field. So we've got that plus 7.143. Six gives us 1.143 times 10 to the negative 5. 1.143 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. And came out to be positive, or duh, they're both positive. I mean, they're both inward, which we call positive. So we can say the direction there being inward. So that was a part A. So we move on to another part. It's asking kind of the same sorts of things, but now we want to know well, what about the magnetic field at a location that is 0 0.13 meters above current carrying wire number one? So there's 0 0.28, take half of that approximately, shrink it down a little bit, and we are going to look along this line here. Want to know what is the magnetic field at that location? So let me just go ahead and erase this interior portion so we don't get bamboozled by it. Erase this, erase that, erase that, yeah, yeah, let's just erase all of this. How about that? We don't know what the field is up here. We've got ourselves some distances. We've got ourselves R1 is going to be equal to 0 0.130 meters. And then we've got R2 is going to be this quantity plus the 0 0.013 meters. R2 here, R2 is going to be equal to 0 0.410 meters. So there we go. We've got our two distances away. And as we did before, we can go ahead and look at the direction of the magnetic fields that these two current carrying wires generate. So we look at current carrying wire number one. Current to the right, we're looking up above it. Magnetic field that it generates is going to be out of the board in this case. So, got ourselves B hat one, and in terms of its magnitude, like the same expression in general, mu zero I one over 2 pi, R1, I1 is 5 amps, R1 is 0.13 meters, and let me just go ahead and stick that in. Seven point six nine two ten to the negative six. Seven point six nine two times ten to the negative six. A Tesla. And then we move over to current carrying wire number two. So current carrying wire number two has direction to the left. We're looking up above it. The magnetic field that it generates is into the board. Well, well, look at this. We've got opposition with respect to the directions of the magnetic fields generated by these two wires. So ultimately, we're going to get a subtractive effect between them. Nonetheless, we've got ourselves this is our B hat 2, and we can go ahead and calculate its magnitude. The magnitude of B hat 2 is going to be equal to mu 0 I2 over 2 pi times R2. So let's throw that in here. Go ahead and change our I2 to 3 amps and change our R2 to 0.41 meters. And we get ourselves 1.463 times 10 to 6. 1.463 times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla. Notice that the magnetic field generated by current carrying wire number 1 is greater in strength than the magnetic field generated by current carrying wire number two. Two reasons for that. The current wire number one is greater than the current wire number two, and we're closer to this one. 
So that should stand the reason that the magnetic field is going to be stronger nearest to the larger curve. At any rate, we want to be able to add these together now. So we go ahead and say we want to know what is the net magnetic field at that particular location. That again will be the vector sum of the two magnetic fields present. To add together, there can be only one. And what do we get? Well, we've got one end, one is in, one is out. So which one's out? B1 is out, B2 is in, B1 is greater. So let's just say that let out be the plus direction and in be the minus direction overall. It's really, it's arbitrary, you could pick either one and the sign tells you in the end what you get, but this is easiest. So, we've got ourselves. B1 was positive. B2 is negative in terms of their directions associated with their vector quantities. And we've got the difference in their magnitude being 7.692 6 minus. The answer gives us the answer of 6.22 We'll call it 6.229 times 10 negative 6. Came out to be positive. Positive means outward in the direction of the field that dominates. So that's basically it. You want to know the net field somewhere? We add up the individual fields, just like we've always done. Now we're just doing it with magnetic fields due to current carrying wires. All right. So, that's it. Have a good one.